Hi. This is Digitact, and the purpose of this video is to go through a bunch of ideas, tips, and tricks to help you get more out of it. Many of these ideas will work on other samplers too. I'll run through each quickly so that if you're familiar with the trick, it won't take long to get to the next one. Some of these I made up, some of them I found on Electronauts or the Digitact Facebook group, which are all excellent resources for Digitact owners. If you have an idea not mentioned here or a better way of doing things, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to leave a summary in the description and give you credit. So with that said, without further ado, let's get going. Now, one of the cool things about Digitact is that it supports single cycle waveforms, which means that even though technically it's a sampler, it can also behave like a full-fledged synth, especially since it has a filter, envelopes, an LFO, and so on. Now, one of the things that brings oscillators to life is pulse width modulation, especially square waveforms. And since Digitact only repeats short samples in a cycle, that doesn't change the waveform, so theoretically that's impossible. But if I load up a square waveform, and I'll pick one that comes with Digitact, this one will do, and loop it. There's a way around this limitation. You need to do two things to make this trick work. The first is modulate the start point with an LFO. An LFO, by the way, if you're not familiar with the term, is short for low frequency oscillator, which is a fancy way of saying automatic knob turner or parameter changer, only it can do it in many different ways and quite fast too. So if we take an LFO and have it point to the sample start point. Let's see what happens. Now you get a pitch wobble rather than a change in the character of the sound. The second half of the trick is to shorten the sample length, which will keep the pitch steady as we modulate the start point. And I'll fast forward through this part. So after some messing around, this is my square wave, these are my start and length positions, and let's hear some pulse width modulation. I think it's these kinds of things, plus a few more things we'll touch on in a bit, which turn Digitact really into a pretty impressive synth, not just a sampler. And this handles quite nicely across multiple octaves. So that's a simple pulse with single cycle waveform. If you want more single cycle waveforms, see a link in the description for a bunch of great resources for them. And finally, you can use long samples as a basis for synthesis too. Just sample long sounds around you that have a steady pitch like whistles, hums, or even the wind, and you can pitch that tone, apply filters, LFOs, and effects to it, just like single cycle waveforms. So don't limit yourself just to those. Now once we've got this waveform, we can of course filter it. Just like any other sound. So I'm not saying that I'm gonna trade in my analog synth tomorrow, but in terms of diversifying your Digitact palette, this is a great way to go. By the way, while we're on this topic, a thing that confused me in the beginning regarding Digitact, and I think is worth clarifying, is the difference between samples and sounds. Samples are the raw waveforms that we load up and then process. For example, a single cycle waveform or a drum or a dog barking. And once you've loaded up a sample, you can start manipulating with the LFO or filter like we did, add effects and so on. And once you've done that, you can save that as a sound for later use. And since firmware version 105, I think, there are two pools. There are pools of samples that you can pick from, 127 per project. And there are also pools of sounds that you can choose from. And there can be up to 128 of those per project. Now you shouldn't confuse pools with overall storage. So you can store up to one gigabyte of samples but have 64 megabytes of samples in the pool, 127 samples, readily accessible for each and every one of the steps in your pattern. Same goes for sounds. You can store overall 2,048 sounds on the Digitact, from which you can pick up to 128 to be immediately accessible for every step in a pattern 
on a per project basis. Okay, let's move on. In theory, Digitact doesn't have built-in support for playing polyphonically. If I want to play two notes at one time, it doesn't work. Now you do have eight soundtracks that can play in parallel. So I can take this sound that we just created, copy it, and then paste it in a few more tracks. And now I've got the same sound mirrored across four tracks. Now I could start detuning each and every one of these. So for example, create unison detuned super squares or detune these sounds to create chords. And to save some time, I won't be precise in my tuning. I just want to make a point that if you want to play polyphonically, you could do this. All right, so now I can play chords this way. But going around step by step like that across tracks can be a bit of a hassle. I could resample this major chord back into one track, but then I'd be stuck with one chord that couldn't transpose very well. So ideally, I just want to connect a MIDI keyboard or be able to sequence notes polyphonically. Now, as you may know, the audio tracks can only sequence one note per step, but the MIDI tracks can sequence up to four note chords. So ideally, we'd need to find a way to take the up to four notes that we can sequence on each of the MIDI tracks, or potentially even more notes that we can get on an external keyboard, and split and play them separately across multiple Digitact tracks. So luckily, there are a few ways around this limitation. All of them are different ways of taking a chord, either from Digitact or from an external source, like a MIDI keyboard or computer, and splitting and spreading those notes across multiple Digitact tracks dynamically in real time. Now, plan A for this is using a smart cable from a company called RetroKit that can do exactly that. They can take MIDI notes out from the MIDI out and bring them back into the MIDI in to control the audio tracks. There are, however, three problems with plan A with using the RetroKit's cable. One is that it will take up both your MIDI in and MIDI out ports. Two is that it requires a MIDI out jack that can supply power to its internal processor. Yeah, the cable has an internal processor, which luckily the Digitact can, but your MIDI keyboard or a computer MIDI interface may not. And the third problem is that I don't have that RetroKit's cable, so I can't show it to you. I haven't tried it, but I heard it works. However, if you have a computer around, or a thing called Boombox, which I happen to have, then there's a plan B to overcome the problems that I mentioned. Of course, the problem with plan B is that you need a computer or a Boombox, so if that's an issue, go back to plan A. The nice thing about using a computer or the Boombox is that you can perform this trick using the USB cable, MIDI coming in and out through here, which leaves these two ports free. So to make plan B happen on a computer, I reached out to the company that makes Bonebox and MIDI Translator Pro last week and asked them to please write a script that could make this dynamic magic happen. And they did within a day, which is pretty cool. And they made it available for free, which is even cooler. But you do need the box or their software to make it work. Another alternative is a free Max for Live script. And I'll link to that below. But then you'd need Ableton Live Suite or Max for Live, which doesn't come cheap either. So after all that talking, I need to reset the tuning of all my oscillators. So now as I play a note, notice it cycles through the four tracks. And if I go into chromatic mode, I can play chords. Now, another cool feature of this script is that it can send CC messages across multiple channels. So I'll choose CC 74, which controls the filter cutoff point for any of the tracks here. And then I need to go ahead and activate it. And now I can not only play chords, but also open up the filter across multiple tracks. And if we assign an LFO to this parameter, we'll be modulating four destinations at once, which is pretty darn cool. So that's how to play the Digitact polyphonically. Okay, let's move on and take a look at a few interesting uses for Digitact's LFO. Now, I just want to say, don't underestimate the Digitact's LFO. It can do things you've never seen LFOs do. And that's because both the amount of destinations and how varied they are in Digitact is something that's quite special. And later on, I'll show you how to add even more destinations than what's available by default. 
I've gone ahead and loaded a single cycle sine wave. And let's talk about FM or frequency modulation synthesis. It has a unique character or timbre and we can recreate that on the Digitact. Now the idea is actually quite simple. Take one sound, uh, take its tune parameter, and then start wobbling its pitch gradually. And if you wobble that fast enough, you get sounds that are very typical of FM synths. Now, creating an FM sound and keeping its pitch are two separate things. Unfortunately, that requires a lot more precise modulation controls, which is probably why Electron created the Digitone. But if you want to create atonal, percussive, metallic FM style sounds, this works quite well. Another interesting form of synthesis you can experiment with a Digitect is granular synthesis. So I've got this sample here, a nice piano tune, a nice long sample, right? Now this does require some parameter tweaking. You can look at the parameters on screen here to get an idea of what worked for me for this sample. But once I go in and sequence a pattern where the sound is re-triggered across multiple steps, then you can sort of get these kinds of effects and scan through the sample. And it's nicer if you apply reverb and delay. Really nice way to sort of look at the small bits of a sample and just stretch them out through time. If you get some clicking, you can go into the amp envelope just to play a little bit of a tech. Cool stuff. And yeah, and as you tweak these parameters, you can get some interesting results, like different waveforms, for example. I mean, different LFO waveforms. So different motions through the sample. Yeah, there's the singer there too. How nice. So that's granular synthesis. How about some wavetable synthesis? So the general idea behind wavetable synthesis is that you cycle through two or more waveforms or samples, and ideally you'd also have the option to morph smoothly from one waveform to the other. On the Digitect, we do this by applying an LFO to the sample slot parameter. And the idea is to use an LFO to cycle through a bunch of samples that we've loaded up. Okay, and these are some of the factory standard FM samples single cycle waveforms. Let's take a listen to that. Now, similar to the granular synthesis method, we've got to re-trigger a note to hear it. Right, so we're basically cycling through the different slots here. And I can sequence this, of course. The depth parameter determines how many samples we take out of the table and flip through. The more depth, the more samples. Because we're using single cycles, changing the tempo won't impact pitch. Now to have fun with this, you don't have to use single cycle waveforms. What I did here in this pattern is load up a few longer samples from Korg's WaveStation app on the iPad, and we can cycle through those as well to get a nice 90s vibe. And the nice thing about this 
is that of course it retains pitch as we mess around with tempo. Because like before, we're just playing samples and spreading them apart or bringing them closer together. Now, unfortunately, you can't morph between two steps or samples on the Digitact, but if you find or create a group of samples where one by one a shape morphs from one sample to the other across, say, 20 or 30 steps, you can simulate wavetable morphing on your Digitact. Okay, let's move on. Now, as you may know, you can add ratchets to steps. straightforward stuff, but you can't modulate those ratchets, which could produce a nice effect. So here's a nice trick that I learned from one of the presets. I'm gonna go ahead and mute all the tracks. Check out what's going on here. All right? There's an LFO applied to the sample length on this track, which is sort of gradually moving around between triplets to different types of ratchets in a really nice and dynamic way. And that's how you can create modulated ratchets. While we're on the topic of learning from the factory samples, here's another nice one that I learned from a preset on the device. You take a nice short sound, create a pattern, the idea is simple, a random LFO applied to tune with a hold per step. Of course, add some reverb. Maybe some more. And I think we just invented a new form of synthesis, which shall be called water drop or cavern synthesis. So clearly, with so many good uses for LFOs, you may want more than one per track. Luckily, there's a solution for this too. Now, this is the same MIDI loopback trick, only this time we'll be using a simple MIDI cable or a simple patch on the computer that just takes the MIDI going out of the Digitact and sends it back in. For the sake of keeping this diverse, I will unplug the USB and plug in a regular old MIDI cable. Yeah, and just put one end in the out and another in the in, and you should be good to go. Now this opens up a world of possibilities, not just for LFOs, by the way. For example, a cool use case for a simple MIDI loopback cable is to transpose patterns. So the idea here is that rather than copying a pattern multiple times, you would use MIDI control messages to transpose a pattern. I'll start with a simple one bar pattern and transpose it, but you can actually create patterns up to four bars long and then transpose each of those patterns. So I'll pick a simple sound here. Now I'm going to create a one bar pattern, but I want uh, to be able to extend it to four. So I will have a total of four bars in this case. And I'll program in a very simple sequence for this pattern for the sake of explaining it in a quick and easy way. Right, simple pattern. So that's a one bar pattern. I'm going to use four MIDI bars to transpose it. Let's check out this MIDI track. It's got a lot of stuff going on. This is one of the preset pattern, so it's always better to disable stuff you're not going to use. And I'm going to be broadcasting on channel one, and I checked in the manual, and I know that tuning is CC16. And then finally, I want my MIDI track to be 16, sorry, 64 steps long, four bars. Right, one bar on the synth, and four bars on MIDI. Now I could put the transpose trig on every first step of each of the four bars, but it would be delayed just a slight little bit and it would sound like a pitch bend, which is cool if you want it. So I'm going to put the transpose instruction on the last step of the bar before I want to transpose. I want the basic tuning to be set at 64, which is what the system is at by default. And then five semitones for bar two. 
and then another couple for bar three, and then back to 64, right here. Now I used function and the trig step to create a noteless trig because I only want the modulation to happen. I don't want a MIDI note to be played. And if all goes well, right? A nice four bar transpose from one core loop. Now this opens up a lot of options. For example, you could use a trig condition on each of these steps so that they happen across eight bars, not just four bars. You could go even further with that, right? So if we look at the trig conditions here, they can be happen, forget the percentages, but very consistently, either every two bars, you'd use this for the first set, this for the second set, sorry, two rotations, not two bars, and then every three rotations, four, five, six, up to eight different rotations, which is, we can generate quite a long pattern. Which brings me to one more parameter that you can lock this way, which is program changes. Which means that if you want to chain a few patterns together, and you can do this using the chain function, but that doesn't get stored every time you turn off your dig attack, you can create long songs by having each pattern linked to another pattern and to another pattern and so on. And that will be saved when you turn off your dig attack. And all you need to do to get this done is a simple MIDI cable plugged from the out back into the in. So that's one way to use the MIDI loopback to transpose patterns. Another way would be to add additional LFOs because each audio track only gets one LFO or to modulate destinations that aren't available as one of the default options in the LFO menu. For example, the um, dry wet mix of the compressor isn't a modulatable destination in the built-in LFO. So to get that going, all we need to do is look in the manual, see that the CC number for the dry wet mix is 118 go to a MIDI track, enable it, choose 118 as a destination, right, for our value number one, and then in the LFO, choose CC1 as that destination. So the MIDI LFO is going to modulate this CC parameter, which in turn will be sent to the compressor. So let's check that out. This is the normal compressor function. Then I'll go into my MIDI track, go to the LFO, increase the depth, and you can hear the funky behavior already. Now I'm not saying you should do that, but if you wanted to, you now have an LFO that can modulate stuff that LFOs couldn't modulate before. Let's slow this down a bit. Go deeper, maybe. Okay, this clip is getting quite long as it is, and I've actually got plenty more to cover. I'll put everything else in the next edition of my Electronic Music Ideas Tips and Tricks ebook available to my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in a sequel to this clip or have any other interesting ideas you want to share, please leave a comment below. If you like this clip, please hit the like button. And obviously, if you want to see more like it, click subscribe and ring the YouTube notification bell to make sure you're actually getting notified when I publish new clips. Thanks very much for watching.